welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going up Helm Crag, which is just behind me there, also known as the Lion and the Lamb, so one of the most recognized tops in the Lake District. And we're gonna take an Easdale Town. It's a relatively short walk. It's about three and a half hours, so one you can do in the afternoon when we're coming into autumn. It's important to get those little ones in. Right, let's have a look at it on the map. Starting off in the historic Lakeland village of Grasmere, we take Easdale Road and find our way over a footbridge and onto the valley floor. We begin the ascent and admire the Sour Milk Gill waterfalls on the way up. After viewing the tarn, we work our way back down. It's a steep incline with great views back over the valley when you stop. When we reach the Line and the Lamb, we've got excellent views over Grasmere Lake. At this point, we're heading down the fell. Then it's a low level walk back to the village, which partly joins the earlier route. As we leave the village, we're heading off down Easdale Road and that's going to take us onto the path and into the fells. I'm just about to get past the Grassmere Youth Hostel and I was in a bit of a rush this morning <laughs> and I've reorganised my bag. So this is my winter bag. I'll put all the gear stuff in the description for you. You can see what I'm using. But there's a little wire that connects to my mic and uh, I've forgotten it. So I'm going to use the raw GoPro sound today. So if it sounds a bit different than normal, then apologies, but that's what a GoPro sounds like. So as heading down the road, we're going to get to these buildings down here, take the path at the side, and then run our way into the fells. Grassmere village is a bit less busy as you go into the autumn, and because it's a bit of a chill in the air now, we're getting to late November. You can just go through this little gate and that will keep you off the main road. Oops. Conditions today are pretty good. It's about 7 degrees and it's autumn so that's what you can expect. There will be a bit of rain later on but not too bad for us. This will only take about three and a half hours. And say so we'll take in Eastdale Town and we'll take in Helm Crag which is really accessible from Grasmere. And you can just do an up and down if you want to, but it's a great family felt. As you go down the road here, you quickly get to a bridge and then you get off onto the fells a little bit. Here's our bridge. This will take us across to East Hill Town. <laughs> like a little tracking shot. Little slate bridge for us. Then we're on to more of a trail. So you can do this either way around. And I know the cloud's going to drop a little bit later. So I might do Helm Crag first, then work my way around to the tarn. Oh, squeaky. <laughs> I do like this path, it's very well set and I've been up here before, probably about this time last year, which was a beautiful autumn day. It's probably about 8 degrees but felt a lot warmer. We're tracking down the valley and then we'll come to a waterfall and a bit of a wild swimming pool at the top, so I'll show you that. Then we're working our way towards the town. There's a farm a little bit further up than last time I came down here. I kind of got stuck in a lot of cows that are moving up, so <laughs> I'm hoping that doesn't happen again. Because uh, although I do like cows, I don't like to be in a herd of them. <laughs> it's a bit intimidating. <laughs> I'm at the split point now, and you can go towards Helm Crag, just to my right, or take the path to the left, and that'll take you to East Town. This is what it looks like. So that is the bridge if you want to go straight to Helm Crag. But I'm going to go to East Town first, so up here. As you can see, the path behind me there, really stable. So this is a well-trodden route. And in the summer, really busy. Today, there's a few people on it, but typically autumn in the lakes, a lot quieter. <laughs> Shit there on the graze, all right. Oh yeah. We're heading away from East Hill back, and then we're going to work our way up. So a bit of stiffer climb coming up, 
and that takes us towards Sour Milk Gill Falls and that's quite a notable little waterfall in the area you can see it cascading down to the valley and there's a wild swimming pool right at the top there so this is it just in the distance here get closer in a minute East Old Town, one mile so we'll be there soon <laughs> little sheepies From where I am now until we get to the town, it's about 200 meters in height. And as we get there, most of that is by the side of the falls. And there's a little bit to do as it eases off, they'll be at the town. So just under a mile, we're quickly there from the village of Grasmere. This is Helm Crag, just at the side. So I was up there doing the green burn round, probably about a year ago now, but I'll put a link in if you want to look at that one. And that's a pretty good one as well. Green Burn Round, it's a ridge walk. So you go up Steel Fell, you pick up four Wainwrights, including Helm Crag, and then down to Grasmere. So again, that's a reasonably short one. So if you're trying to pick up as many Wainwrights as you can really quickly, it's a good one to do. I'll put it in the description for you. Some berries and holly standing out there as you go into the winter season, getting ready for Christmas. If you do watch the channel fairly regularly, then you'll know I didn't post a video last week and that's because I was doing uh, some other work I was doing a Santa Dash so 2,000 Santas including me on a 15 mile walk for charity and that was for Darien House which is uh, it's a children's hospice based in Chorley and that raised about £35,000 which is absolutely fantastic and it's going to go a long way to helping those kids out if you're interested in donating, I'll put a link in. Uh, but yeah, great local charity. It's a very small hospice, so everything welcome there. You'll just be able to see it coming down there. We'll give that a good look in a minute. This side of the walk, it is pretty quiet. Past a couple of groups of people, but that is it. So it's probably because it's autumn, because I know in the summer it's a lot busier. And it's due a bit of rain later on, but not for quite a long time so we'll easily be up and down by the time that happens anyway i've got this on got my jacket on uh rain jacket so ready for the inevitable climate change in like districts this up it's about it's about 150 meters uh, until it eases off for the last 50. So it is definitely noticeable, but yeah, it's not too bad. A bit of exercise in it. Getting a bit close to the falls now. And last week I was in the Easdale area, so hard not fought, hard not. And at the bottom near there, there's an absolutely amazing run of waterfalls. I've never seen anything like it in the Lake District. So for the best waterfall action in Lake District. I think that's it, but equally, this is a cracker. I'll show you now. The path becomes a little tighter, but guarded by the wall. And just over the side, you can get a good view of the falls. There we go. So we're out to in a minute. Just at the top up here, there is a plunge pool. So if you're a wild swimmer, that is a great one. There was someone in that last time I came up here, but in the autumn, it's not one for me. <laughs> but you know, each to their own. Even though it's quite steep, the path still remains that really well-preserved path. So easy to walk on. Boots aren't even muddy yet, I'm about two and a half K in. There's Sow Milk Gill Falls coming in. Looks like it drops about 100 meters going down. Wow. There's the path, there we go. Blocky, steppy, easy to do, nice and dry. This is what you get when you get near the top. Fantastic waterfall there. And a fun pool, okay, what is it?
leave the main waterfall. The smaller ones follow us at the side. And soon we'll be at the Tarn. So the East Dale Tarn has above it Tarn Crag. And that's Wainwright. So if you want to bag a few of those, you can just nip up there. East Dale Tarn's quite a good little stopping place on this walk. So you can stop there for a sandwich if you wish. And it's also got Tarn Crag just above it. So if you are bagging Wainwrights, that is one. I've got another video on it, so I'll pop that in. There's a little bit of light rain round today, so I brought my rain jacket. Uh, my bigger bag that I've got for winter, it has a cover on it as well. So I can see that. The other one's just a size down, doesn't it? So this one's a bit better for the winter period. Even though I don't need all the features of, you know, a massive bag. Just handy to have those extra things to keep your stuff dry. And um, this coat as well. Quite like it because it's got quite a generous pocket on it here. And if you're filming, you can just shove your GoPro in there. We're approaching the town and it's really the source for sour milk gill so you can tell kind of where it's going to be the sour milk gill is just here and the town's just behind that Gentle 50 after the waterfall, and now we're getting to East Dale Town. So. This is it as we approach, and you've got Tarn Crag just up here, and that's another way in right. down this path, this is the gill at the side, and then there's Helm Crag just in front. Some of this is a bit rocky coming down, but we're sitting on the valley floor and we just head over to Helm Crag. Overall it's pretty straightforward as a walk and uh, we've got this nice path that takes you most of the way, you can probably see it there behind me. So even though it's been raining, it's actually totally fine and the path hasn't even got my boots muddy yet. Seems to be a bit of an expedition on the other side. <laughs> Some people doing the same route I think, but there's probably about 40 of them. We made it out a little bit before the masses this morning, so quieter where we are, but it'll get busier towards Helm Crag. A little bit of a stepping stone situation as you come through here. Can't keep your boots dry, so it's fine. I've just noticed, just looking at Helm Crag and just beyond it, there's the Fairfield Horseshoe, and there's a bit of snow on top of that. So even though we're about a month off the start of winter, it's uh, changeable circumstances. So I do need to think about a new pair of boots. If it wasn't for these stones, it would be pretty mucky down here, but it's a pretty well laid out conservation path. If you have done a Helm Crag or the routes around here, just let me know how you did it, because I've done it as part of Green Burn Round. I've also done it singly, and I've done it as part of this route. So let me know how you did it, and uh, what you thought of it, because it's the home fell for Grasmere, in the same way that Loughrig is for Ambleside, or Latrig 
is for Keswick and it's a good go-to fell on a relatively short autumn or winter day you can do it really quickly and it's a fun one to do if you're just taking someone for the first time or going yourself for the first time So any further I'll show you the ground conditions down here because it's pretty wet. Uh, you can actually keep yourself bone dry by staying on the rocks but obviously if they weren't here this would be pretty bad but realistically there you go my boots are alright. I was on top of Hard Knot in the East Delta Valley kind of last week and I got caught out in a bit of clag but I knew it was going to do that because I checked the weather forecast before it went but the one I check is called Mountain Forecast and I'll put it in the description for you but if you are <clears throat> checking the weather forecast don't go on something like BBC because that'll tell you what it's like in the village but you need to know what it's like on the top and the good thing about it is it does tell you the cloud level and I know today it's about 500 round here and then it's going to drop in the afternoon so I've take, chosen to see this one today because this one is 400 or just over 400 meters so it'll be absolutely fine until about three o'clock by that time we'll be in the pub at this point in the water you can see quite a clear split in the path so this is it and you can go that way and helm crag is just there and you'll be tempted to go down here but don't because that's just going to take you straight back uh, to the village so we need to actually go this way and then we'll work our way onto the fell and onto the tops there's a couple of markers around to help out well this side is certainly a lot quieter helm crag is also known as the lion and the lamb both ends of the fell are marked with significant rocks so you've got howitzer at one end and then the other end is the lion and the lamb because if you're looking up from the valley it looks like a lion uh, with a lamb just underneath it at his feet the rain's cleared up now and if you're new to hiking then i know some people are looking at this probably because they're thinking of going out for the first time i know some people are dead experienced on the channel that watch it because i speak to people in the comments all the time and great to hear from you guys but if you're going out first time um, clothing wise this is a just an over jacket really so it's really thin it's for wind protection really and if i'm at the tops and i'm feeling warm but it's windy i can pop this on and i'll feel fine my jacket underneath the blue one slightly padded it's not really waterproof but that's there for thermal and underneath that i've got a merino wool base layer and <laughs> with base layers there's basically a couple you can get you can get synthetics and i've got synthetics you can get them really cheaply and they will take water away from you and dry off really quickly so that's why they're great and use them all the time especially in summer the merino wool is a little bit warmer you can get thin medium and then thick but mine's a medium one and the benefit of it really is it's um well <laughs> compared to cotton it absorbs some of the microbes and things so essentially you don't stink when you get off the mountain <laughs> so that's the main benefit the one thing you want to avoid is cotton because cotton's got a habit of getting a hold of moisture and just keeping hold of it so if you go out in cotton especially jeans or a t-shirt and then you get wet you're going to stay wet so if it's a bit cold like today that's soon going to sap the heat out of your body so yeah synthetics great or apart from that merino wool if you want to go out fairly regularly i've only got one merino wool top because i only go out about once a week so pretty expensive i think mine was about 70 quid but my synthetics are about seven quid so a bit of a price difference and as long as it works for you it's fine but yeah just don't go out in cotton i'm supposed to go over here it's a bit of a mess 
right, I'll stay on the boulders though. Again, apologies for the audio because I've normally got a better mic, but I forgot the wire today, so I didn't, didn't manage to use my proper mic. This is the GoPro mic, and if you are starting out doing a YouTube channel or thinking about it, some people have been asking me about it, then you can use the GoPro onboard normal mic, and it's pretty bad because <laughs> it does pick up a lot of wind. Uh, I'm using the media mod and it's slightly better and mic wise i tend to use the dji one because when you're moving the gopro away from your face and back again it's an audio nightmare when you're doing the editing because it's all sorts of different sound levels so yeah if you've got the clip on mic any clip on mic really it just keeps things consistent for you anyway just a tip if you're thinking of doing youtube channel The rain's eased off now, so it's nice and dry. Stop a minute for a little sandwich, get a drink, have a little fly at the drone, see what we can see around this area. Girls at the side, and once we get a bit further down, we hit a wall, then we're going to take that up onto the felt. There we go, so there's our gill, and then here's the wall. We should get across this thing first. <laughs> right, up we go then. I overshot the path a little bit. I'm supposed to cross a little bit further up here, so I'm just at the wall there. Uh, I did look at this earlier on, but it looked a bit mucky, so I came down a bit further. That's kind of why I didn't want to do it. <laughs> it's a bit of a mess. All right, so we might get our first bit of mud on the boots. It's a bit squelchy, but only a few yards. The back's up 150 meters-ish. I'm going to about 405. So a bit of a notable climb. 250 or so so a couple of stops on the way but it does sort of even out a bit and then go a bit steeper later on that's us coming through the autumn ferns some sheep on there just enjoying the view and this is what they've got to look on that is back towards the tarn just up there and the water falls about here all right admiring the view that sheep and look at that so the bridge is down here come from then we've worked our way up here on the way up I've just passed two sets of people and they both complained about how steep it is coming down so I'm doing it this way really because I want to the waterfalls the tarn build up to Helm Crag but yeah the other way you can see on the map it's quite steep down this so if you have done it either way just let me know what you thought of it because yeah it does look pretty steep the path down from Helm Crag is also quite steep but it's um, a bit windy on the hillside, so it takes some of the pace out of it. So, pretty good, and uh, probably this is my preferred way around. Sometimes when you're coming up in the lakes, you see these big bags at the side, which you've got there. And what they are, if you don't know, is new rocks that have been dropped in by a helicopter and to construct this conservation path. So this one I'm on now, it's not, <laughs> it's all right, but it's not like really solid. So I'm just gonna do some work here soon and get this all built up. And you can get in schemes to join in with those and help out. And because I'm around the lake so much, I really like, I feel like I should do that this summer and put a bit back in to, uh, support the conservation and keep the path stable for future generations well i'm a bit further up now and what i do on the big climbs is take it in stages 
50 yards or so, 50 meters, see how I feel. Uh, yeah, but take it easy, it's not a race, just do your own pace. You can actually see where we're going there, so this is going to come round and then you'll hit no doubt a flat bit and then we'll start to go more steadily up towards the end. The bag's about 30 metres behind me and when you hit this grassy stuff you're pretty much on the bit where it levels off. I'm going to get to Brackenhouse in a sec and that's a split point where you can go down to the road if you want to. We're going to keep going up to Helm Crag. Helm Crag's just up there and it is a bit of a steep climb to go up. It'll get a bit busier here because we're meeting up with the people that have been on the green burn round. And in the distance there, just as we join, you can see a little bit of snow just on the top. And this is all the Fairfield Horseshoe, uh, which is a great walk. I've got a video on that, so I'll drop that in the link if you want. Yeah, look at the snow on top of that now. Properly getting to winter. That's my first sighting of snow this uh, year. So looking forward to a good winter and thinking about what clothes I'm going to need because I might need a wardrobe top up. If you want to see what I am wearing or what I use, I'll put it in the description for you and that'll click you through to Amazon. Uh, I'm not sponsored by anybody, no one pays me to do anything in terms of buying me clothing or anything like that. I'm not big enough. <laughs> if you do want to do the green burn round, then you just come up from the road here. Basically the Traveller's Rest and you get to Steel Fell up there. Then you're round to Calf Crag, which is behind there. This is Gibson not in front and then up to Helm Crag, so we're just at the foot of the ascent now, and then you've got four mates. The final ascent going up here, it's about 50 meters or so. It is pretty steep, um, but yeah, it is only 50 meters, so it is doable. And once you've done this, then you get the reward of your own Wainwright. Uh, someone will be on top of the mountain to award that to you every time you do one. So yeah, that's fine. You get a little ribbon and it's a nice little uh, certificate to take home with you. So once you've done that, then we can head down to the pub. We're getting to the top now. And it is remarkably quiet. I thought busier than this. Uh, and we're at the sort of north end of it. So you come across a rock formation at each end. And at this end, that is what you've got. So that is quite the rock face. So that's it in Wainwright's book, and there it is in reality. So, pretty good. And the howitzer is seen from Dunmail Rays. So the highest point there is the true summit, but I'm not going up there. We're gonna work our way to the other end, and that's got another rock formation on it as well, which is a bit easier to get on top than that, <laughs> because even though I've been up to that, I don't fancy getting on it. The uh, actual drop off is quite significant down the other side. So it's a little bit of sleet coming in, but we've avoided all the clag today, which was the main objective, so that's great. If you enjoyed the video, then it helps me click on the like, and if you want to pop a comment in, that's great. Tell me if you've done this, or if you intend to do it, and who you did it with. It's always good to find that out, 
So I did this first time round, probably when I was uh, about nine or so years old on a day trip to Grasmere. So it's a great one for introducing people to the fells. From the other end, you can see uh, Grasmere Lake itself and then down to Grasmere Village. And a bit further on, across the other side of the lake, is of course Loughrigg. And I've been on there a few times. Now this end is often claimed as a summit, you can see some people on it there because essentially it's a lot easier to get on. So that's the lion shape and that's the lamb just underneath it there. Down here, we've got a good shot, Grassmere Lake and then down to the village. In the back you've got Loughrigg Fell, so we've got a couple of videos on that and there's some great walks just going over the top there to Ambleside. All my stuff, I just put it in folders on the site. So if you want to check out the Central Fells folder, that's got all the walks around here. All right, we'll just get to this end and clamber up. Let's see what's going on. So easy climb, then you're on the top. There's a steep drop off, but it's a great view out. heading down to the village. So that is the lane and the land done and we've also got the tarn in and we've also got the waterfall in. Makes it a lot more slippy so just be careful on this top bit. It does level out quite quickly and then you go into the woods and then into the village. As you're coming down, you just do get this rocky section to start off with, but it soon clears. Then we're onto a grassy bank after that. So a bit of focus here. And then we're down. Most people are actually coming up this way because it's the easiest and quickest way onto the crag. Yeah, just round there. Then we're down. Because this is the sort of straightforward route up and down, uh, just past a load of toddlers going up, well kids that are like four or something like that. So well done to the parents for getting them out and it's a good old game to get up the hill if you are that small. So yeah good fun and it is really quick if you're just doing the up and down route as well. So I say good family friendly route this. I must also point out it's just started sleeting so if uh, you are doing it just bear in mind I say clothing's a bit of an issue this time of year so layers are the thing to do two or three layers ideally base layer mid layer walk through top layer and that should do you fine Lower down the grass turns into this trail again and it's fairly easy. We're going to hit a wall in a sec and then we'll pop down into the woods through there and then we'll shortly be back in the village. Here's our wall and this is our turn point. All right, let's get down here. It's quite well constructed this, been down a few times. If you've been here before you'll recognise this. So we're just going to hit the path down there. This is our path and then we're taking the turning just inside here. It's been a good walk and it's actually done what it's supposed to weather-wise. The clouds stayed above 500 meters so 
the uh, mountain forecast was right and we got these all day and it's just gone into a little bit of sleet slash rain now as we get into the afternoon it's about half past one something like that right so a little bit to go maybe about half an hour we're back in the village one mile to Grasmere and then Helm Crag one mile from here as well this is us then back to the village I must say thanks to everyone who's been watching the channel we've just hit 10,000 watch hours this week which for me seems quite a lot um, because I've not been running this for a year yet I just thought I'd give the channel a year see how it goes I intended actually just to do it to record my own wetback journey and it's uh, got out of hand so <laughs> anyway I hope you've enjoyed the content we're heading to the pub now so I'll see you in there thanks for watching the video catch you on the next one Getting down to Jack Doyle Cottage, and we are taking this other newly created signpost. That's a bit tight. Remember this from earlier? That was the bridge, and um, we came down here when we left the road, and we headed up, and the falls are just there, and he's Delta Town just at the top. So you can do it either way round, but for me, this down is a bit easier than <laughs> what you get if you go the other way. And um, some people were complaining about that other one, so yeah, probably this way. But if you've done it the other way, just let me know what you thought. What did you think of it? It is a good route, I think. Really enjoyable, fairly easy to do. A couple of steep ups, but you know, <laughs> getting Wayne right, so you've got to go up. So I'll say just over the bridge here, and then we're back. My boots are actually dry, despite the fact it's been raining a little bit for the last hour or so. And there's some marshy bits, but yeah, it's quite well constructed. And a great one to do in autumn because the path is quite steady and stable all the way around. Again, some lovely autumn colours coming through. Chaff inches. Hi mate, you alright? 